All right, welcome back to ABA exam review and the continuation of our BCBA 5th edition task list series with F9, Interpret Functional Assessment Data. We've done our indirect assessments. We've done our descriptive assessments. We've now got to move on to actually developing our hypotheses into our functional analyses into actually developing our plan. So now we're getting into the actual work as an analyst. And what you're going to be doing day in and day out as an analyst is interpreting your assessment data. And it's not as nearly complicated as you would think, because ideally your assessments were thorough and very complete. If your assessments are thorough and complete, interpreting the data should be the easy part. That's what we're going to cover today. As always, be sure to subscribe if you have not already for all of our updates. Check out BehaviorAnalystStudy.com for all of our study materials, including our combo pack and practice exams. As always, work hard, study hard, spread the word. Let's get going. All right. We are at the point where we are now going to interpret our information to formulate the hypothesis. We've done the assessments. We now need to figure out what do we think is causing the behavior to occur. So this is before the functional analysis but after the indirect and descriptive assessments. And how are we going to do that? Well, we're gonna take all that data we gathered during the interviews, the surveys, the record reviews, during the ABC recordings, we're gonna take all that data and start to look for patterns. When does the behavior typically occur? In the presence of what type of antecedents, what type of consequences are given as a result of behavior. So if you're in home, what typically happens in the learner's home in the presence of that behavior? And that lends itself as well to environmental events. What does that home look like? Or if you're in a clinic, what does the clinic look like? If you're in a school, what does the school look like? Does the environment play a major factor in behavior? Now, of course, you'd say, well, environment always plays a major factor in behavior, but we need to be very precise. What exactly about the environment is promoting behavior or preventing behavior from occurring? This is really, you, you really get to be the analyst because you want to start developing your FAs into your interventions based on your interpretation of your data. Now, you've got to remember, behaviors may serve multiple functions, and I will always tell, especially new analysts, be very careful. A lot of people like to revert to behavior being automatic or for sensory needs. And be careful about doing that because one, automatic behavior is very difficult to treat. And two, it can be very deceiving when you think a behavior is automatic. Remember, for automatic behavior, the behavior's got to produce its own consequence. So be really, really diligent in your analysis of your, your assessment data before you revert back to your automatic behavior. But again, behaviors may serve multiple functions, and behaviors come in different topographies. And those different topographies may indicate different functions, or they may indicate the same function. They just look different. So this is where you got to spend some time. What did my indirect assessment say? What did my environmental assessment say? What do my descriptive assessments say? And one way we can do that is by using our classic ABC format. This is the old standby. Why? Because it, it works. It makes sense. It puts things in context. For example, our hypothesized function is escape. So escape from hand washing and lunch. And a really easy way to do that is look at the behavior where flow screams and falls to the ground. Well, before she does that, what evokes that? What, what happens? She's prompted to wash her hands in preparation for lunch. We know that's the typical antecedent. When she falls to the ground, the termination of hand washing and lunch by being sent to timeout. So she escapes from hand washing and lunch. Now, all of our assessment data, hopefully we have at least a few data points where this same pattern played out over and over again. A lot of what you do is pattern recognition. And if you get good at recognizing patterns and behavior, 
where every single time it's time to wash hands, you can recognize, well, it looks like lunch is also around the corner. And when she screams and falls to the ground, she doesn't eat lunch. So if we see that over and over again, that is a clear pattern. And so when you write it out like this, one, it's easy to see what happens right before and right after. And then you can start to ask yourself, do I want to modify the antecedent? Is it going to be easier to modify how her hands are washed or how she prepares for lunch? Or should we modify the consequence? Should we just prevent the escape and continue doing what we're doing over here? Or maybe we modify both. When you put it this way, it's a very clear picture of function, of antecedent, and of consequence. And you can start formulating that clear hypothesis. Because once you have that hypothesis, now we're going to go into FA mode. So usually we're going to be doing brief FAs if you're in practice. Five, 10-minute FAs, trying to identify the function in the most efficient manner possible. Once we have our function, then we can develop our intervention. The intervention revolves around the function. It's why we preach to technicians, to paraprofessionals, the importance of function. Everything we do revolves around that function. The intervention has to be based on the function and should be functionally equivalent. If you're teaching replacement behaviors, those replacement behaviors need to serve that same purpose. They have to meet that same function. And so what you can do is you can refer back to your ABC format to see what can I change, what can I add, what can I remove in order to accomplish our goals. Don't overcomplicate the interpretation step. If you do your assessment right, if you do it thoroughly, if you're diligent, the, the interpretation part is the easy part. You have a clear ABC pattern, and then from there, you can have your hypothesis, and you can go directly into your brief FA and hopefully identify a function. And by that point, hopefully you have already started developing potential interventions. So you can see the steps, right? Typical process would be indirect assessments into descriptive assessments, into interpretation, into hypotheses, into an FA, and then we develop the intervention. Just like that. Boom, boom, boom. We now have an intervention ready to go. And so when we start the next part of the task list in our next video, and we start talking about strengthening behavior, a lot of that stuff is going to be repeat. Because now we're talking about reinforcement and motivating operations, stuff we've already discussed, but in the context of a treatment plan. So that is interpreting functional assessment data. Very straightforward, very easy. It's a reason this comes last, because we want to cover all the assessments first. Because in order to interpret and hypothesize, we need to know where in the context of our plan development do we interpret that data. As always, please subscribe if you have not already. Check out BehaviorAnalystStudy.com for all of our study materials. When you pass, let us know so we can include you in the Sunday shout-out. Work hard, study hard. See you soon.